Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna have a look at poly. So the last time we looked at bass, which is a monophonic analog synth recreation. Now poly, we come down to creative extensions, instruments, poly, pull that over to our MIDI channel. Uh, this time they're attempting to create a polyphonic analog synth, uh, a vintage old style analog synth. So if we have a quick zoom in here, and um, we'll start off with the oscillator section on the left. So we've got, let me just reset these so that we're not getting any coloration from the filter. We've got four oscillators to choose from. That's quite loud. So we've got a saw wave, a pulse wave. Let's try that lower down. So it's a nice rich oscillator section like, like with bass. Saw wave, pulse wave, you've got a sub oscillator. Uh, sub oscillator, you can have a saw or a sine, I believe. We'll have a look at that in a second. And you've got a noise generator. I missed the noise generator from bass. I think it would be useful in bass, but we've got it here anyway. So you've got four oscillators to choose from. Above each oscillator volume dial, you've got a control section. So this cross mod, pulse width, sub wave selector. Yeah, so you've got a saw or a sine wave you can choose from. And color, these correspond to the oscillators that they are placed above. So if you have a look at those quickly, you've got a saw wave with cross mod. And what cross mod is doing is taking the pitch of the pulse wave to the right here and using that to modulate the pitch of the saw wave. So the pulse wave is your modulator. So if we apply cross modulation, then we come into the tuning section. This is the tuning fork, so it's exactly the same. It works the same way as bass does. And then if we change the pitch or the tuning of the pulse wave, you don't have to have the pulse wave turned up. Uh, it will change the sound of the cross mod. And again, cross mod is one of those things where you have to find a sweet spot. There's no defined way of doing it because it, it depends entirely on the pitch of the incoming modulator and the, the, the note you're pressing and the volume of the note you're using. It's, it's one of those things that you have to play around with and find a sweet spot. It's not something I use a lot because it is quite um, random, but you've got it there if you want to. So saw wave, you've got cross mod. Pulse wave, you've got predictably enough, you've got pulse width. And you can use the modulation section to create pulse width modulation, which we'll come on to a bit later. And if you don't know what pulse width is, have a look at this set to 50%. You've got even spacing between these pulses from here to here to here. Pulse width is going to vary the width of those pulses. One way or the other. Over to the sub oscillator. The control section here just allows you to choose between a saw wave and a sine wave. It sounds it sounds like you've got the same kind of really rich sine wave as you have with bass. Let's just have a quick look on spectrum. No, actually you haven't, that's odd. Now that's a fairly pure sine wave but it still sounds nice and beefy. And then finally, we've got the noise oscillator. So it's a standard white noise coming out of there. And then above that, you've got a color parameter. And if you set this positively, you're applying a high pass filter. So it's just gonna get tinnier and tinnier. And if you use your ADSR envelope, that's instant hi hat. There you go. And then obviously the other way, negatively, you're applying a low pass filter. So this is more like a pink noise. And then and you can use the mixer section here to blend them all together. I mean, you can hear already, this isn't a pristine, clean sound like you get with something like Serum or Anna 2. This is quite old and dusty. Um, and finally, over on the right here, in the oscillator section, we have the ability to use a ring modulator. So the, the there's an oscillator built in as a modulation source, and you can use this little button here to choose between a, a ramp down or a saw and a sine wave as the modulator. So if we just apply some ring, mo ring modulation here. And 
and this is this is setting the frequency of the modulation oscillator. So if you use a saw wave, it's a little bit grittier. And if you use a sine wave, it's kind of more ringy and metallic. And again, one of those things that you need to find the sweet spot, it's, I find it more useful than cross modulation, but it's not, again, it's not something I use a great deal. So there we have the oscillator section. Now we're going to move over to the filter section. Um, just at the top of the filter section, you've got the LFO. You've got one LFO in this synth. And you can choose between a sine, ramp up, ramp down, triangle, rectangle, sample and hold. SNH is sample and hold. And um, we've got something called bin. I'm not sure what that stands for. Maybe binary. It's it's a little bit like a Morse code kind of signal. It's like did it did it did it. I'm not sure exactly what the algorithm is. Uh, it's not something I come across very often, or if at all. But it's there if you need it. And you've got random. And then you've got LFO rate. And you've got the same fade in functionality, so you can have the LFO fade in over a specific set amount of time, up to 10 seconds. Again, you can choose between frequency, which is measured in hertz here for the LFO rate, or you can sync it to your door tempo and use a time time signature synced to the door tempo. And then obviously we've got the LFO retrigger, so you can have retrigger on or on or off depending on whether you want the LFO shape retriggered each note press or not. Um, I don't know why they've chosen this color here because I can barely read that. Anyway, I usually leave it on frequency. Uh, so coming down to the filter section, we've got a high pass filter and a low pass filter baked in. Now, the way this works and the way the oscillator section is set up, I have a feeling this is this is loosely based on one of the old Roland Juno synths because this is how they used to do things. If you look at like a 106 or a Juno 60, they have their high pass filter and low pass filter set up like this. They're, they're hardwired in. You can't choose which filter you want. They're both there for you to use at the same time. Uh, then you've got your sub pass through facility again. So if you want to have a sub oscillator, when this is highlighted, your sub oscillator is routed through the filter. If that's off, The sub oscillator goes through the filter without being affected. Again, this is something I would probably leave on most of the time. And then you can adjust your resonance. I don't think I don't think it takes out quite as much bass as the low pass algorithms in the basin, but it still does take out quite a lot. Okay, and then under that, we've got our filter ADSR, our filter envelope. Now, the filter envelope can be looped. So if we set up, and this is looped between the attack and the decay phase. So if we set up a little plug here, and then set it to loop, it's actually looping between these two values here. actually starts going to audio rate when you take the decay time down into the millisecond range. Turn that back up again now. So that's the filter section. Uh, then we come over to the modulator. Turn, turn loop off for a second. Let me come over to the modulation section. Now you can modulate with modulators. Now the modulators will be LFO, filter envelope and amp envelope. So they're your modulation sources. And with those modulation sources, you can modulate your low pass filter, your high pass filter, volume, pitch, pulse width, your ring mod frequency, which is this one over here, and your LFO frequency. So you can use the filter envelope, for example, to modulate the LFO frequency, but you can't LFO frequency the LFO frequency. So that's blanked out, if that makes sense. Um, and then what you do is you simply, if you decide you want your filter envelope here, to modulate the pitch of your oscillators, you come down here and come across here and where these two meet, that's where you want to apply some modulation value from zero to 100%. And you've got the same kind of thing with your MIDI modulators. So your key tracking, which is which key you press on the keyboard, low or high, uh, velocity, so that's how hard you hit the note, or aftertouch. And I think, I think only one of my keyboards here has got aftertouch. Let's try this. So let's apply some aftertouch to the low pass filter frequency. Put this down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the note down. I'm holding it down now and I'm going to press it harder. 
See, as I'm pushing it down harder, it's opening up the filter. So that's what AT stands for. So it's a fairly simple modulation matrix, but it's got most of the things you need there. And then moving over, over to what I assume is the master section here. Um, this is another reason why I think they're modeling this after a Juno, because you've got a nice chorus section here, and the Juno synths were famous for their chorus. And you've got fl three flavors. This is off, then you've got A, B, or C, and they get gradually more intense. So that's, that's with A. This is A switched off. Let's actually give it some more. Let's tune this down a little bit. In fact, I'm going to tune it up. Now, what you're going to hear, I'm just trying to give the chorus something to grab onto rather than just a single oscillator. So the chorus is going to thicken up the sound quite a lot. So let's listen to A. And you've got some nice stereo width added there. It's actually a really nice sounding chorus. It does sound fairly similar to the Juno ones. Right, B is a little bit more intense. They describe this as a string chorus. So this should thicken up the sound even more. And then the C, they call a rave chorus. So that sounds quite detuned. You're getting to the stage now where it sounds more like a, an attempted super saw. A lot of the time I use A. And then you've got a random panning function here. So the higher you set this percentage, the more likely it is that the note you press is going to be panned left or right. So I'm just going to press the same note, which is C, and let's hear it move around the stereo field. Let's turn the chorus off for this. So you can hear that moving around. Volume, I'm not going to go into that. We know what that is. Then we've got pitch bend. Now at the moment this is set to five semitones. Let's set it to seven, which is a nice perfect fifth. And what I'll do is I'll set the uh, pulse wave back to zero so that we have, don't already have a fifth playing. And we can turn the sub off and the noise down. So what I want to do is set these both to 100%. So we've got the saw wave and the pulse wave playing at the same pitch. Now at standard, this is going to be set to all. And what happens is as I move the pitch bend wheel, uh, both oscillators are being pitch bent by the same amount. Now, if you switch this off, what that actually says is saw. Again, you can't read it. And what this will do, what this is doing, this is only pitch bending the saw wave. So it's leaving the pulse wave as it is. So you can hear two separate notes sounding as I apply some pitch bend. And if you're fairly accurate with your, with your pitch bend, I'm not. You could probably get a tune out of that. Uh, not something I can do though. Uh, again, I tend to leave this on all. And then you've got your glide. Uh, for this, you're probably best setting this to mono mode. So let's go into that quickly. You can have polyphonic mode, where you can play polyphonically, mono, and then you've got unison mode. And with unison mode, it's going to stack voices and the parameter underneath is unison spread. And that does start to sound a little bit dissonant if you play your <laughs> rate of chorus as well. Um, so unison is something I'd probably use quite sparingly. So switching back to mono mode, let's turn this unison down. Um, that allows me to just use, use the glide function and you can set the glide time here. So you know, you know what this is, this is just allows you to define the amount of time it takes to glide from one note to the next. one thing I find annoying is that you've got velocity sensitivity um, applied to volume at 100% and it just doesn't always work like that. I don't always want it set that high. So there's glide and then finally underneath you've got your amplitude envelope. So you've got attack, decay, sustain, release. So you can use that to you know, create the volume 
envelope of your de desires. Okay, so I've been playing around with the synth for the last few hours, and I'm I'm a proponent for trying to find out the um, best use for a particular synth. So if I was trying to make a great big thick super saw, I probably wouldn't choose this synth. There's a number of other synths you can go for. Or if I was trying to create a really heavy textural pad sound, although this is polyphonic, I probably wouldn't go for this either. But because of the way the filters work and because of the way that the oscillators sound, I actually find this more useful for really subtle pads like atmospheric moody dark pads so let's just try and create something that or even plucks something like that but not not something where the, the filter's wide open so let's try let's start with a saw wave let's have some envelope back and i'm going to introduce some pulse wave and then i'm going to use the lfo to do some pulse width modulation. Let's just turn the saw down a second. I've got that set to random. I think I'll use triangle. That's a bit loud. And let's try it. Yeah, I think I prefer the sine wave for the sub oscillator. Let's introduce some noise. Somewhere around there. And then I don't want the high pass filter in this case. So we're going to apply some low pass filter. Let's try some resonance. And then what we'll do is we'll use the filter envelope on the low pass filter. And let's just bring the low pass filter down a bit. We've still got this set to mono, we want poly. Right, something like that. Um, we might also try, because we've only got one LFO, um, we have to use that one for anything, everything. So I'm gonna try a little bit of LFO on pitch as well. Very subtle. Okay, so this is quite a dark sounding um, little kind of pluck we've got going on here. Now the next thing I want to do is apply some chorus. And the thing about these old analog synths is they didn't do a lot by themselves. If you look at an old Juno 106 and you delve into the controls, there's not actually a lot going on there. They, they relied on the integrity of their sound and then effects were applied to them to make them sound very lush and very big. So, um, I'm going to use the chorus. Let's try chorus B. I know I'm not going to use C. Don't like it. No, I think I prefer A. It's a bit more subtle. And then let's try some random panning. Yeah, that just moves it around a little bit. kind of synth wave thing or maybe you know the stranger things that kind of thing and then finally what I would do is I've actually been using um, this echo plugin the new echo plugin for live 10 is really nice and I'm going to start off with this ethereal canyon preset it's a little bit too massive as it is Let's just pull down the reverb dry wet I don't want that much feedback and I just want to play with the filter a little bit. So 
I'm trying to play with two keyboards here. Um, so yeah, that's that's the kind of thing I would use this synth for. We're not going to delve too much into sound design with this in this video because we're going to do that a little bit later. But I would probably go for this synth if I wanted something dark and tonal and. Something like that, you know, it's just, it's something that you can play and it's it's nice and, well, I'm going to use the word analog. It does actually sound analog. analog. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video useful. We will be using Poly again later in a more track build scenario. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thanks, everybody, for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.